Hey what's up YouTube? Today we'll be looking at how to send a push notification from your Android app or you could say to your Android app regardless how to send a push notification. Alright I've seen a lot of tutorials online that are just downright difficult and painful to understand so I'm going to try to make this tutorial as quick and fast as possible. Yeah quick makes fast redundant I know. Anyways um where are we now we're looking at one signal which is basically what we're going to be using to send you um your push notification one sim what one signal actually is a server that you can send your push messages from okay you're going to need one of those just in case you didn't know all right so first of all we are on the dashboard at the documentation part you won't be required to read this i've already done that but you're going to need definitely a an account with these people and guess what it's free and it will remain free as that's what the developers say so it's going to be free and this is the simplest way i know how to send this push notification all righty so basically if you haven't signed up for this one signal account please just go sign up we're not endorsed by them they don't pay me i wish they did but they don't but it's just something i've noticed that really works in terms of sending your um push notification it's pretty simple and why i chose one sim signal instead of just going with firebase overall is because firebase doesn't work so well on your phone and you probably want to send a push notification from your phone as in you want to send a push notification from your phone all right so enough of that let's get into the code okay so assuming that you've signed up already you should be seeing something like this which is your dashboard something similar so basically you will click on create a new app and bear in mind you're on one signal that is one signal.com and I'm assuming you have already signed up and you click new app so you click your new app and let's give it a name so we're gonna call ours code solu code solutions obviously and you click create alrighty so once you've you've done that you'll say congrats on creating your app now you must at least configure one platform so what you do is you click on your settings here and we are going to be doing Google Android so you click configure because it says inactive here you click configure so you click in right there it's going to ask you for your 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 Google server API key and your Google project number and so therefore how do you get these I'm going to show you how you get them you simply go over to Firebase which we're going to bring up here and this is our Firebase thing here so once we are at Firebase what we're going to be doing now is simply creating another app so I'm going to now and let's just click add new project and what's the name of your project we're going to call this code Sol. I'm yeah, too lazy to spell this out and it's going to ask you what's your region so I'm going to be searching for my region just in case you didn't know it's Jamaica and no I know I don't sound Jamaican sometimes I think well maybe I don't know do I sound Jamaican all right I'm looking for my region it I can't find it I know it's here someplace I know it's here someplace it's under J woohoo Jamaica all right, and now we click create a project. And this is on Firebase, which you'll have to sign up for as well. Signing up for it is free. So you just sign up with your Google account and you're supposed to be good to go. All righty. Now we have our, 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 um, we have our app set up. We're going to click on this gear signal right here. So you're clicking on that gear signal and click on project settings right when you're on project settings you're going to click on cloud messaging and it gives you a server key don't worry if you try to copy my server key i'll be deleting this app anyway <laughs> so i don't know if you can copy this server key it's pretty long anyway 
so you're going to need your server key and you're going to need your your sender ID all right let me just see if I can store this someplace all right so notepad all right that's a long ass key right there and this is the the name there the number so we're storing that someplace as well all right you're going to, that's what you need so far so let's go right back to our one signal console so where it says Google server API key blah 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 we're gonna get we're gonna paste our server key in there don't know what it look like we have one right here already we don't need that because we're going to be putting in the new one and mine's been pre-filled because I actually have an app out there already a nice test that I'm actually doing and we're copying this very long code here and you're pasting it right where this is okay and where you say Google project number that's the number that you got down at the bottom going to be copying mine right here and we're going to be pasting it right here then we click save all right so what you should see now is your google android project um asking me google android project should now come on as active which is good for you all right so you can go down to where your apps are and you should see it this is mine um code solutions Alrighty, they say select a SDK and ours is obviously Android, native Android. There we go. They're saying install the SDK. That 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 that. Read the documentation after installing. That that, that 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 that's optional. Okay, we don't need this. We don't need this because finish later yeah mm -hmm. we have basically what we want already all right so we're going to go to the next step which is to basically set up our android studios as we can actually right, so set up our project. to get started what we need to do is simply create our android studio project so we click create new studio project all right we're going to call this one code two and just simply click next and next and we're going to start with an empty activity so next again and we just keep this as the default and finish and it's going to start building out our project all right so while it builds what we're going to need is to set up the S, um, SDK so basically you just simply go on Android SDK setup you don't have to if you're watching this video you can just simply follow what I'll be putting in so it's pretty simple and we're going to do this with as minimal code as possible so that's it we're gonna make it as simple as possible I'm going to pause the video while this builds out so and resume when it is there because this takes a little time because I'm on a slow slow computer all right so well it starts off with us in our main activity so what we really want to do is go over to our project view and what we're going to do we are going to be adding first of all let's add internet permissions to the manifest so let's go on the manifest and we're going to add our internet per permissions so you just simply just say all right simply just type in uses spelled uses wrong so we simply type in uses permission and it starts to come up android permission internet all right so we're set so the rest of work we'll do inside our Gradle. So they have on their 
website a complicated way to add this I'm going to show you the easier way you don't need, need to put in anything complicated I'm going to show you the easy way how to do it simply go back to that's my emulator simply go back to app click on your app right here in your project view and scroll down to where it says open module settings click on that and then go right over where dependencies is and what you're going to be doing is adding the one signal dependency so just simply click that green plus button and click library dependency and you can type in one signal which is one word click enter all right and it should be come that one signal that call on that one signal and we're using 3.5.8 you can use any one if you're watching this later and there's an next one and click OK alright now there's something that we must not forget there's another dependency that you'll need to add and that dependency is based on their documentation it is com that Android support custom tabs and it's 2.5.3.1 and you can just simply copy it off their documentation or I'll just leave it inside the description if I can so we copy that and we go back to our projects and we click that plus button again library dependency and we add that and click OK alright click OK we're almost good to go so Gradle will start building out now you shouldn't get an error once you've added that if you don't add that then you'll get an error so while Gradle builds, we are going into our main activity Java. And now we're going to simply be copying this code. It's in their documentation as well. And that code is right here. One signal that start in it that this. You can zoom in if you're not seeing in focus and blah 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 and that yeah. just copy all of that you don't need to swat it you don't even need to know what it does you don't need to even care what it does and right after your super uncreate what we're going to do is make some space and we just paste in that code then it's going to ask you to import one signal so you just press enter the alt and enter and there you go that imports it and there's just one more step before we complete go to your gradle and go to your gradle build that gradle double click on it and right where you see there we go build that gradle and you're going into the module part and right where you see default config just create some space and go right back to the documentation right here and it's going to tell you what to put there and this is what you're going to put manifest placeholders and you're going to copy everything to that last square bracket and just copy all of that go back to where you have after default config paste that in and it has a part that says one signal app id put your one signal app id here that it can be able to recognize the app all right so you can just delete that but keep the quotes go back to the documentation again i'm going to be placing the link to the exact docu documentation that you can actually use it all right so what you go where you're going to get your app id is just simply go back to the dashboard right up here click on go back to dashboard Alrighty, and then you look for this, and this is our app, which is Code Solutions here, our Code Solutions app, and we click on that, and I'm going to show you how you get the ID. Click on App Settings right here, which is on the left. So you click on it, and you're going to see Keys and IDs. Click on Keys and ID, and copy the thing at the top, which says One Signal App ID. Copy this copy all of it and then just simply open back your Android Studio and paste it right between those two um, quotes and pretty much that's that 
all right so we have that we have that and let's just sync our griddle mm -mm -mm. all right so griddle is now syncing there we go now let's just simply know that's pretty much it so let's just test our application I already have my emulator running so my app should come up in your case it should be a lot faster than what I'm going through and then we're going to send a push notification from the one signal dashboard but let's just get our app running first so let's wait on it all right so we're in our app our app is loading up taking a time because my emulator is slow all right so even if we close the app which is what we're going to do with the app, let's now send a push notification from the one signal dashboard all right so we we'll click on your app here which is code solutions again and you see right at the top it says send push notification just simply click on send push notification a new push notification it's asking you should you send it to everyone right now yes so we just click next it's asking our message so we're gonna say hi what up push and our message is gonna just be yay all right and it gives you a preview of what your message will look like but yeah we click in next gives us more um, options to send icons and large icons but we're not interested in that and it gives us options to schedule when we are going to send this push we're going to be sending it immediately and let's just click that confirmation button and then click this send message button that's it let's look now where is it and let's pull down our notification center inside our app and there it is hey what's up push yay and that's it guys that's how you send a push notification i hope this has been simple i will make a link to the documentation inside the description and if you like this video you know you should give it a thumbs up and if you love what we do here at code solutions you can always subscribe it helps the channel it keeps me motivated because i don't get paid a lot <laughs> i don't even get paid from this but i do it for the love for you guys so yeah when you guys like or subscribe it does encourage me to do more um i hope it has been helpful and yeah i think i'm saying too much and yeah guys who have already subscribed I'm going to keep you covered. I'm going to be doing way more videos. I haven't had the chance in a while. But it's coming. We're not dead. We're still around. Alright. Thanks for watching.